Hey there, check it here. And uh, as you can see, I'm standing in front of my CNC today. And that's because I want to show you how I'm exactly making uh, one of these acoustic bridges on my CNC. Show you all the steps, give you a bit of a rundown how the process uh, of making something on a CNC is like. Uh, so you can better understand uh, how to work with a CNC. Maybe you are interested in getting one or you're simply just interested uh, how it works. And in the last video, I did a little bit of a rant telling everybody that uh, yeah, it's, it's more than just pressing one button and uh, you get like the, the result. You have to um, do like many steps and there's a lot of thinking and a lot of preparation in uh, making something happen on the CNC and getting it accurate and not uh, messing anything up. So yeah, I want to make this video to show you really yeah, the step-by-step -step process yeah, so you can get a better idea how CNC works. So this is the UCNC program, and it's basically the program I use to uh, control the CNC. It's not to make make the the, the model or the, um, the NC code, but um, it's to control the CNC. Um, I simply can use the arrow buttons to to move the head here. And the first thing I have to do, I have to home the machine so that the machine knows um, where it is. So um, there are like these motors that um, drive the machine, but the machine doesn't really know where it is if you don't tell it. So there are these sensors that um, are the soft cap and you have to home the CNC to tell it, okay, that's like zero. And now it's at zero and I can go to my set zero point so I always have to set like a zero point um, or I actually want it to be zero and I have it here on my table I can show you a little bit closer okay so this is like my waste board and it has all the locations of several parts so I'm making my legs on it my bridges my, my uh, fretboards basically everything and um, this is a whole square in the center and I want to use it as my zero point. And I've already zeroed it uh, yesterday, but it looks like it's a little bit out of center, so I have to center it again. So what I have to do is I have to uh, remove this rod of it. So to tell the machine where the center is, I have like this probe here. And this probe has a sensor here, and I'm going to show you how it works. So I have to insert it to the machine. It doesn't have to be very tight, but um, that's okay. Okay, now I put the probe inside the hole, and then I tell the machine to do a center orientation, and then, yeah. Yeah, now it's uh, locating and uh, making sure that the tip of the point is exactly in the center. Okay, now I have my zero set again. Okay, and now I can actually start to work and insert the rod a bit that I need. And here basically have my uh, different rod bits. And for this one, I'm gonna use the six millimeter end, end mill, this four millimeter for the saddle slot. Um, this 12 millimeter ball end for the um, basically shaving and then I have a I think the six millimeter um, round end mill for back half out and a two millimeter drill for the holes. So let's say I want to use a six millimeter end mill. I got my bushing right here and I put it in and I need to make sure that it's really tight because one thing that could happen is something like this. So this was the exact same uh, router bit and uh, yeah, it was loose. So it yeah, got deeper and deeper when I wanted to cut out fretboard pocket and yeah, it worked itself down until it kind of <laughs> went up into the table and then kind of the machine stopped and the motor stopped. And uh, yeah, actually the machine doesn't stop really. You, you have to hit the uh, stop button because the machine simply just uh, keeps going no matter what 
So we, you really need to keep an eye on it and, um, and yeah, basically always have your hand on the uh, stop button. So in case something goes, goes sideways. All right, now I'm, I'm almost there. <laughs> uh, now I need to um, check the exact height of the router bit. So now it knows um, it's in the center, but it doesn't know how far the router bit is sticking out. So I have to move it closer to the probe. Put it right underneath and then press the tool length censoring operation. And now it knows, okay, um, the exact uh, position of the roller bit. And uh, now finally I can start working with the machine. So the first step is, of course, uh, cutting out a piece of wood for this uh, build or for this bridge. I'm going to use uh, Zono wood, which is a densified uh, walnut in this case. And yeah, basically cut it out with the denser. And then I'm going to use this uh, tape and super glue technique. So I'm using uh, this very thin tape that I put on the table as well as the as on the back side of, of the wood and then use a super glue to glue the two pieces together and it's an easy way to fix something on the CNC without having a, a vacuum kind of setup which uh, I want to get um, at some point but for now this is what I'm working with and the first operation I'm doing is cutting out the silhouette so the auto contour with a six millimeter end mode. And after that, I'm putting in the two locator holes at the bottom. So in the final product, I want to have these two uh, locator pins. They are between uh, the outer strings and they serve first as a locator. I'm also fixing the bridge with some screws because it's a pinless bridge. And after that, I'm gonna turn around the piece and I'm ready to do the uh, rough carving of the uh, top side. And for that, I need to locate it again on the board. And for that, I'm going to use these two little um, holding pieces here. And yeah, they are basically to locate the bridge. So first I need to run a clearing program that basically gets rid of most of the material. And then after that, I'm going to use a uh, kind of circular motion that really gets the shape of the top. So after I've machined the top, I need to make the bridge slot. And as you can see, my bridge slots, they are in a bit of an angle. So it's a five degree angle, which um, in my opinion is a little bit better because it's more in line of the actual pressure of the um, strings and it also gives me a little bit more material on the front side here makes it a little bit stronger and also makes the break angle of the strings better and for that I have a fixture so this fixture here you can see has a little angle and I have these holding pieces that I can use to hold in uh, the bridge so that it's in an exact position so I'm going to use that to fix it on the board and then use a 4 millimeter and move to route out the channel. So for the next step, I want to drill the holes and these holes, I also want them to be slightly upwards so that I get more material uh, above them. So it's a little bit stronger and they are like in the right position and they come out exactly where I wanted, and not too low, not too high. And for that, yeah, it's also nice to have it like a five degree angle. And for that purpose, I'm gonna take the same fixture I had before and put like a 90 degree angle on it and then fix it like this on the board. And for drilling in the holes, it's important that you choose a program that retracts the drill bit. Um, so it only drills like two millimeter each time and then retracts. And you got a brush off like the, the excess material so the drill bit doesn't get too hot. And yeah, you get a nice clean cut.
So the last step on the CNC is to make this a uh, little groovier. Yeah, I like it so that the ball ends don't stick out as much and um, yeah, they sit nice and clean uh, here in this little groove. And for that, I'm going to use a round end mill to round out the rough shape and basically get rid of most of the material. And yeah, it's really hard to make it like super, super clean. So I'm leaving a little bit of material and doing the rest by hand. So first I'm gonna finish the concave uh, shape on the back, which is uh, quite complex and yeah, needs a little bit more work. And then also I need to sand all the surfaces because yeah, CNC is pretty precise, but still um, the drill bit is pressing down the material and yeah, it changes color and we also need to yeah, basically uh, sand off maybe uh, 0.1 millimeters of material on the top and yeah, make it nice and clean and basically fine sand it so that I can use my French polish or if you don't polish it, of course, you can uh, just sand it up and maybe polish it with a uh, polishing compound or something like that. But yeah, basically uh, sanding up really high, then putting on some oil, waiting one day for the oil to cure, and then finishing up with some French polish. And yeah, the French polish doesn't take very really long, but um, yeah, it's basically every day I'm doing uh, a round of, of polish on there. Let it dry, do it next day for like maybe six, seven days. And then I have a bridge like this. So this bridge isn't completely finished. Um, yeah, it has maybe two or three coats of uh, French polish on there. And yeah, I'm also making some plum bridges. So that's what this looks like. And yeah, this is basically how I make this bridge using the CNC. And as you can see, quite some steps involved. It takes me about two hours to make a bridge, uh, including maybe the polish a little bit more. And yeah, when I was doing it by hand, um, it took maybe a little bit less even, because there's much less setup. You basically do a copy router and then uh, just work out the shape by hand, and drill the holes by hand. It's actually faster, but yeah, it's less precise, especially like the holes. I always had problems getting like the perfect spacing on the holes and having the, the perfect nut slot. So the nut slot is really precise, four millimeters. So the, um, the bone doesn't really um, rattle around. So it's really nice and snug and uh, perfectly, and yeah, really get like, perfect kind of proportions and yeah, it's, it's every time it's it's basically the same and yeah that's that's why I'm using the CNC because yeah it gives me just a product that I couldn't really do by hand and yeah so that's about uh, my little uh, guide here to use the CNC hope you found it interesting maybe uh, you learn something if you are using the CNC yourself um, let me know what you think about my process, how I can improve. And other than that, uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.